From the Invisible Girl Toru's appearance in the series to Bakugo's downfall, this season's My Hero Academia is full of easter eggs that most of you might not have noticed. And what an epic season it's been so far. Let's get right into it. This video is spoiler free for anime onlys. For starters, let's talk about one of the most important parts of My Hero Academia, the one for all quirk, with a whopping 9 users. Did you notice this about the visages of all the one for all users? All the former one for all users in the series have a certain color assigned to them. So, if you notice closely when All Might used the United States of Smash, his attacks kept switching colors, starting from the color of One For All's first users to the last, which is a pretty neat detail. That's just the first, trust me. The last easter egg will make you rethink everything about Bakugo's role. Before that, let's move on to the main villain of the series. If there's anything Shigaraki is known for, it's his decay, and also his costume of hands buffet. But did you know that in Season 7, in one of his memories, there's a sneaky hint as to why he had a hand stuck to his face? When Stain and Shigaraki met, Stain actually pinned him down and placed the edge of his knife on Shigaraki's face palm. What's weird is that Shigaraki became very defensive, and even said that he especially didn't want that one hand to be damaged. But why? Well, it turns out that it was his father's hand, and this was confirmed in the anime. And what's even weirder is that the hand on the back of his head was from Nana Shimura's, the hand of All Might's mentor. I also spotted this guy in this scene, when the heroes were pushing the villains into the cages to transport them off to different locations, all according to their plan. I stopped because he looks a lot like Crust, the hero who died and sacrificed himself in the Paranormal Liberation War arc. Nothing was said or explained about this character. Well, this is actually Crust's younger brother, who was once mentioned in Team Up Mission, probably there to avenge his brother. But what about the biggest mystery that people have long been fantasizing about? It's definitely the invisible girl Toru's face. For a long time, the otaku community has been making different designs on how Toru would look, but now they need to look no further. There was actually a spoiler in the opening of Season 7 where we see her face when the sun's rays reflected on her body. Some of you might not have even noticed that you were already spoiled. To say the least, she's going to be the new poster girl for otakus worldwide. While Toru's spoiler was quite subtle, this is almost impossible to figure out if you don't go out of your way to research it. You see, during this final arc, Dabi didn't wear his iconic dark outfit, and instead embraced his white hair and even wore a white robe. This wasn't only so he'd look different, but because in Japanese tradition, the color white is associated with death and is often worn by individuals who passed away. The author even confirmed this himself in the extra volumes of the manga. But why would Dobby wear that in the first place? Well, it's because Dobby himself knows that this will be his last battle. In other words, he's wearing this white robe because he intentionally wanted to die in that battle. We learned in this season the real reason why Dobby came back. It was because he planned to die all along. I'm ready to die. At the hands of his brother too is just poetic justice. Moving away from that depressing fact, in Season 7, Star and Stripe epically fought Shigaraki, but since things were getting out of hand, the US decided to help her by sending a series of state-of-the-art missiles called Tiamat. These missiles were used against Shigaraki, but the name itself is quite interesting. The name Tiamat is inspired by the primordial goddess in Mesopotamian mythology, who is known as the Mother of Gods and associated with the chaos of creation. This is a pretty interesting discovery, because Tiamat is somehow like Star and Stripe who can literally be considered a demigod, even in the MHA universe, just because of her quirk alone. Another thing is that Tiamat is also the goddess of the Salt Sea, and guess where Shigaraki and Star were fighting? Next! So we know there's that one ability All For One has that makes lying to him impossible. This ability is the lie detector quirk, and the known user for this quirk is All For One himself, who used it on Aoyama's parents to see if they were lying. But an interesting theory about this is that this quirk was first stolen from Naomasa's ancestor by All For One. This makes sense considering his background as a detective, and it might have been that his ancestor was either a part of the resistance or a police officer who tried investigating All For One in the past. This might also be the reason why Naomasa is quirkless since it was stolen and not passed on in his family. Not only that, we have an interesting easter egg that'll make all the Bakugo fans out there cry their eyes out. Because it seems like the new ending of Season 7 revealed everything before we even knew it. It all started when we looked at the ED and saw two kids that held out All Might's cards. But after that, there was only one adult hand that held the cards. And who are the two people we know that have those? That's right, it's Deku and Bakugo. And after Bakugo died, beside his body was the card. Sorry to pour salt all over your wounds. I know most of you haven't recovered from that episode yet. 
This was a subtle foreshadowing of his fate. And it doesn't end there. Because when we saw the massive battle between the heroes and the villains, they were all transferred away from each other when Monoma copied Kurogiri's quirk. If you have a great memory, you might remember that all the locations the villains were transported to were previous battlefields or had some significance. First, All for One was transported to Gunga Mountain Villa, which was the main headquarters of the Paranormal Liberation Front. Shigaraki was straight up transferred to the UA High School. Toga was transported to Okuto Island, which is a reference to the author's past work, Oma Godoki Zoo. Then, Dabi was seen in the Kamino Ward All Might Square, where the last big fight of All for One and All Might happened. Other remaining villains were sent to Takaba National Stadium, the main setting for the Provincial Hero License Exam, and lastly, Gigento Makia was in the Jaku Hospital Ruins where the high-end Nomus were produced. Going away from all that serious stuff, there was one cameo that just went past us. I'm surprised not a lot of people are talking about it. What is it? Well, you see in Season 7, Shoto and Bakugo were packing up some villains in the streets. But if you slow down the episode and look closer, you'll realize that the villain Shoto was icing up looks very familiar. That's because it was a cameo of a fully armored predator from the popular film series of the same name. There was also one clever roast all of us missed, and that's when Kunaida called Ayama the Bat of Aesop. This insult refers to a fable, and in that story, the birds and beasts were at war, but as they were caught in the middle, the bats tried to play both roles and just side with the winners. When the birds won, they would side with them and vice versa. Oh, he just like me. He just like me for real. By the end of the war, both birds and beasts decided to get rid of the bats as both deemed them as traitors. This perfectly called out Ayama's hypocrisy and how to Kanaida, he played both sides just to survive. And what about Spinner's new sword in Season 7? Well, that was a bigger version of his first sword. You see, Spinner used to have this weapon that looked like all kinds of knives, hatchets, and more just wrapped together to form a monstrosity of a sword, but that was destroyed by Deku back in Season 3. After that, he used a regular katana, but right now, after he became even bigger because of All for One, he's back with his original sword. And last but not least, the craziest and most surprising secret that we discovered in the series happened when Shigaraki saw a flashback as he was fighting Bakugo. In this flashback, he sees a man. Who was he? It was none other than the second user of One for All, Kudo. This is because Kudo and Bakugo have some similarities, where both of them were considered as side characters by All for One, but they were the ones that gave him the most trouble. Kudo was one of the few people who, despite being weak, was able to make All for One scared, and it was because of all these so-called sideline minor characters doing damage little by little until his armor cracked, and Bakugo was the personification of that effort. But what do you think? Will Bakugo make an insane comeback, or will this be his final battle? If you enjoy digging up easter eggs in anime, here's 45 easter eggs Gege Akutami didn't want you to know in Jujutsu Kaisen. Plus, there's a My Hero Academia secret in there too.